Hello everyone, welcome back to Storytime. We are currently reading The Willy Grooves 2 by Terry Tarbox and Terry is a local author who has very kindly said that we can read his stories. So thank you very much Terry and this book is illustrated by Terry's niece and her name is Wendy. So we are currently reading chapter four, story four. Um, oh I can't remember what this is called. Let me have The Willy Grooves and the Mighty Stump of Doom. I should have remembered that because I say the Mighty Stump of Doom an awful lot throughout this story. So we have read the first part and we are going to read part two today. So get yourselves comfortable, sit down and let's find out if all those stories the Willy Grooves have heard about the Mighty Stump of Doom are actually true. As they walked, Wobobble sang a little song. We are the wobbly bums and our bums they do wobble as we walk along they wibble and they wobble they wibble and they wobble they wibble and they wobble when they're not wibbling they're wobbling when they're not wibbling they're wobbling our leader is called Bobble we answer to his call because we know he has the biggest bum of all they wibble and they wobble they wibble and they wobble when they're not wibbling they're wobbling when they're not wibbling, they're wobbling. The three little creatures walked for about half a kilometre until they saw up ahead a small group of trees. Them's the fuzzy boodad trees, said Wobobble. I'll go no further, but I wish you luck, which I'm sure you will need. Brucin and Longstint thanked their new friend and walked into the clump of trees. As they went further in, the air seemed to get colder and the light started to fade. It's a bit scary in here, isn't it? said Brucin nervously. Too right, replied Longstint. I hope it isn't too far to the mighty stump of doom. No sooner had he spoken than something emerged from the trees to their right and in an instant disappeared into the trees on their left. The thing moved so quickly it was difficult to make it out, but it was dark, very large and blurry. Longstint asked Brucin, did you see that dark, very large and blurry thing just then? I did, his friend replied, frozen to the spot with fear. We'd better hurry past in case it comes back, advised Longstint, lifting Rusin from the frozen spot he was standing on and urging him onward deeper into the trees. They both decided they should run for a bit, not because they were frightened at all, but that the exercise would warm them up. So they ran for a while, too nervous to look back until they came to a small green, small green gate blocking their way. As they got nearer to the gate, they heard a whistling sound coming from above them. Looking up, they saw on a low branch a small bird. It was sort of brown with a grey head and looked a bit twitchy. Then, to their surprise, it spoke. Watch her, you two, it chirped. We don't often see strangers in these parts, especially fairy green strangers. We are not strangers. We know each other, replied Rusin sniffly. Well, he was just getting over a nasty cold and didn't have a handkerchief. Sorry, I'm sure, said the little bird. Let me introduce myself. My name is Duffy from the Scrunnock tribe and I've been sent by your tour company to be your guide on the perilous journey you are about to embark upon on this auspicious occasion. I will also be providing you with holiday insurance and currency exchange Commission free, of course. He does go on a bit, remarked Rusin. I do go on a bit, said Duffy cheerily. It's what we scrunnocks do. And if you don't mind my asking, why are you so nervous and twitchy all the time? Rusin continued. Well, answered Duffy, the natural enemy of the scrunnocks is the harrow spork. They are much bigger than us, with hooky beaks and sharp pointy talons. The harrow sporks look on scrunnocks as tasty snacks. So you see, I am always on the lookout for an attack from above. The willy grooves then introduced themselves to Duffy Scrunnock and started towards the green gate, which, which swung open as they approached. Duffy flew on ahead and the willy grooves followed, feeling reassured now that they had someone to show them the way through the trees. Having walked what must have been the major part of a fairly long way, they came upon a sign which read, Attention, here be the lobe chompers. In the event of an attack, earlobes should be covered and knees slightly bent. 
The trio carried on their way for a while, keeping a lookout for the lobe chompers, when, as they turned a corner in the path, there before them stood the mighty stump of doom. Rusin gasped as he surveyed the huge tree stump. Wow, it's enormous, he said a bit shakily. Longstint was speechless, so he didn't say anything. He just stood and stared in silence. Duffy could see the willy grooves were a bit shocked, so advised them to stop for the night and start the climb in the morning after they had rested. Rusin prepared some chickweed burgers and a nice cup of chickweed tea, and the two settled down in the shelter of a bush at the edge of the trees. Duffy settled on a tree branch for the night, having declined an offer of food, saying that he always saved a juicy jangleberry for supper. As they sat, munching away and slurping their tea, Longstint asked, Well, what do you think tomorrow will hold, Rusin? I don't know, replied Rusin, but one thing I do know is that we'll be all right as long as we stick together, as Willy Grews always do. Soon, both Willy Grews fell asleep on fell asleep to the sound of Duffy snoring from the tree above. The night passed quietly and in the morning, as dawn broke, Rusin stretched, then set about making some breakfast, which consisted of toast with jangleberry jam and chickweed tea. As Longstint awoke, Duffy fluttered down from his tree branch and sang a little twittery song. He said, to greet the morning. Right, said Duffy. This is your last chance to change your minds and turn back. The Willy Grews, however, decided that they would keep the minds they had and continue their journey. Are you quite sure? asked the little bird. Because if you turn back after this point, you will be going the wrong way. The three adventurers eventually reached the foot of the stump, which looked even higher close up. Duffy flew a short way up, sat on a ledge and shouted to the others to climb up to him. As this part of the stump was not too steep, the climb was fairly easy. On reaching the ledge, they noticed a small opening, which was slightly overgrown with moss. Fancy taking a look inside? asked Longstint. OK by me, replied Rusin bravely. As they entered the opening, it widened out into a large cave. Is there anybody home? shouted Longstint, not expecting a reply. However... An answer did come from deeper in the cave. No, I'm not in. I went out for the day to buy a book on interior decorating for the small cave, said a, said a female voice, which sounded a bit cross. But you must be in, said Rusin, because we can hear you. This isn't me, the voice argued. This is a recorded message. Longstint was confused, but Rusin wasn't. They ventured further into the cave and after looking behind several rocks, found a little creature hiding. The creature was easy to spot because her head was hi was hidden, but her bottom was sticking out. The creature... Oh, I keep doing that, don't I? Reading the same line twice. Silly me. There you are, said Rusin. How can you see me if I can't see you? Asked the voice. Why don't you come out and meet us? Rusin asked reassuringly. We're Willy Grews, so we'll not harm you. Oh, uh, all right then, came the grudging reply. But I'm officially... But I'm not officially here, so don't tell anyone you've seen me. There followed a scuffling sound, and out from behind a rock came a small, spiky thing that looked like a cross between a hedgehog and a hamster. The small, spiky thing spoke again. All right, then, what do you want? I haven't got all day to stand around talking to you. I have better things to do with my life, like standing on my head and singing lovely songs about fish. I'll have you know it's ages since I last did that. We are very sorry, said Longstint. We were just curious. We didn't mean to disturb you. I don't know, complained the spiky thing. You're minding your own business in your own little cave and all sorts of creatures come stomping in around your home, being all green and furry. What's the world coming to? The two willy grews, realising that they were not welcome, started to back out towards the cave exit. As they left, they heard the little spiky thing grumbling away and then singing this song. I love fish because they are lovely things. Oh, yes, fish are very nice because they don't have wings. I love fish and if I had a wish, I'd use that wish and ask to be a fish. The willy grews carried on their journey, chuckling as they went. What was all that about? asked Longstint. Don't ask me, replied Rusin. 
It's a funny old world and no mistake. Duffy Scrannock, who flew down and perched on a rock, then greeted them. I see you're back then, said the little bird. Not much gets past you, does it, Duffy? Joked Longstint, and all three of them laughed. Nothing much happened for a while, although they did think they saw the blurry shape again, which was a bit scary. It seemed to be following them. I'll fly ahead, said Duffy, to see what's further up the mountain. After a while, he returned, looking more twitchy and nervous than ever. ever. Look out, he squealed. There's a mad chipolata up ahead. Half man, half frankfurter. It's gruesome, all sweaty and pink. Help, call the police, call the fire brigade, call a plumber. Call a landscape gardener. Call several different call several different tradespeople. I want my mum. Good grief! Exclaimed Longstent. Duffy's lost the plot. Rusin ran over to Duffy and put a hand on his wing. It was Longstent's hand. Calm down, little feathery chap. He said, "You're hyperventilating. Take a deep breath, or you'll pass out." Then, turning to Longstent, he said, "Have you got a paper bag in your pocket?" I haven't even got a pocket, replied Longstint. Duffy eventually calmed down and got his breath back. He remembered where he'd left it. I advise you very strongly... Oh, do the voice. I advise you very strongly not to go any higher, warned Duffy. That is the scariest looking creature I have ever seen, even in my reasonably uneventful life. Wait a minute, said Rusin. That sounds like the sausage man we heard about in the rumours. Is it the one that turns your nose purple? inquired Longstint, looking concerned. Must be, answered Rusin. I don't fancy a purple nose. I don't think that would be a very good look for a fashionable willy grew. After much discussion, the three little mountaineers decided it would be a shame to give up the expedition just because of purple noses, so they proceeded with Caution. Caution had just joined them and decided to walk with them for a while. When they reached the sausage man, they were relieved to find him curled up, fast asleep at the side of the track. Quickly, advised Duffy, while he's curled up like a Cumberland sausage, you could run past him before he wakes up. The willy grews acted immediately, sprinting at top speed as fast as they could. They passed the sausage man in double quick time. When they had reached what they thought was a safe distance, they turned to look back. The sausage man had awoken and was looking up the track towards them. However, he didn't seem to want to chase them, so they carried on up the track. Oh dear, right, join me tomorrow at two o'clock where we will carry on reading the story of the Willy Grews and the, oh, the giant stump of doom. Oh, I keep forgetting what it's called, silly me. The huge stump of doom. The something stump of doom. I said it so many times in the last, the mighty stump of doom. Pay attention, Rebecca. OK, so join me tomorrow at two o'clock where we will continue reading this story. So I'll see you then. Bye bye.